Eating disorders. Outline. Introduction. Warning signs of an eating disorder. Presentation. Anorexia nervosa. Bulimia. Management. Conclusion. Introduction. Eating disorders are characterized by clinical disturbances in body image and eating behavior, resulting in significant physical and psychological impairment. Disorders such as anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and binge eating disorder are more prevalent in women. Warning signs of an eating disorder. Unnatural concern about body weight, even if the person is not overweight. Too much thinking about calories, fat grams, and food. Use of medicines such as diet pills, laxatives, and water pills to keep from gaining weight. Presentation Most commonly presents with amenorrhea. May present with fatigue, weakness, or dizziness. Active eating disorders during pregnancy equal to higher rate of postpartum depression. Anorexia nervosa Anorexia nervosa is a psychiatric disorder characterized by the refusal to maintain a minimally normal weight, often with severe psychological consequences. It is more than twice as common in teenage girls, with an average age of onset of 15 years. Patients have a profoundly disturbed body image, as well as an intense fear of weight gain, despite being severely underweight. DSM-4 Criteria for Anorexia Nervosa Criterion Description A. Refusal to maintain body weight at or above a minimally normal weight for age and height. For example, weight loss leading to maintenance of body weight less than 85% of that expected or failure to make expected weight gain during period of growth leading to body weight less than 85% of that expected. B. Intense fear of gaining weight or becoming fat even though underweight. C. Disturbance in the way in which one's body weight or shape is experienced. Undue influence of body weight or shape on self-evaluation or denial of the seriousness of the current low body weight. D. In postmenarchal females, amenorrhea, that is the absence of at least three consecutive menstrual cycles. A woman is considered to have amenorrhea if her periods occur only following hormone. Example, estrogen administration. Specify type. Restricting type. During the current episode of anorexia nervosa, the person has not regularly engaged in binge eating or purging behavior, that is, self-induced vomiting or the misuse of laxatives, diuretics or enemas. Binge eating or purging type. During the current episode of anorexia nervosa, the person has regularly engaged in binge eating or purging behavior that is, self-induced vomiting or the misuse of laxatives, diuretics or enemas. Bulimia Bulimia nervosa is an intense preoccupation with body weight and shape, with regular episodes of uncontrolled eating of large amounts of food. Binge eating, associated with use of extreme methods to counteract the feared effects of overeating. This disorder is characterized 
by binge eating and purging. All the most bulimic purge by vomiting, abuse of laxatives or diuretics also occurs. DSM-4 Criteria for Bulimia Nervosa Criterion Description A. Recurrent episodes of binge eating An episode of binge eating is characterized by both of the following. Eating in a discrete period of time. For example, within any two-hour period, an amount of food that is definitely larger than most people would eat during a similar period of time and under similar circumstances. A sense of lack of control over eating during the episode. For example, a feeling that one cannot stop eating or control what or how much one is eating. B. Recurrent inappropriate compensatory behavior in order to prevent weight gain, such as self-induced vomiting, misuse of laxatives, diuretics, enemas or other medications, fasting or excessive exercise. C. The binge eating and inappropriate compensatory behaviors both occur on average at least twice a week for three months. D. Self-evaluation is unduly influenced by body shape and weight. E. The disturbance does not occur exclusively during episodes of anorexia nervosa. Specify type. Purging type. During the current episode of bulimia nervosa, the person has regularly engaged in self-induced vomiting or the misuse of laxatives, diuretics or enemas. Non-purging type. During the current episode of bulimia nervosa, the person has used other inappropriate compensatory behaviors, such as fasting or excessive exercise, but has not regularly engaged in self-induced vomiting or the misuse of laxatives, diuretics or enemas. Management Treatment should be individualized and goal weights should be based on age, height, stage of puberty, pre-morbid weight and previous growth charts. For a growing child or adolescent, goal weight should be re-evaluated at 3 to 6 month intervals on the basis of changing age and height. In general, medical stabilization and nutritional rehabilitation are the most crucial determinants of short and intermediate term outcomes. Individual and family therapy, especially when working with younger patients, are crucial to the long-term prognosis. Physicians should be aware of several complications that can occur in outpatient settings. Although most patients do not have abnormal electrolyte levels, there is a possibility of hypokalemia, hypercholeremic alkalosis, resulting from purging behaviors, and hyponatremia or hypernatremia, resulting from drinking too much or too little fluid as part of weight manipulation. Endocrine disorders, including hypothyroidism, hypocortisolism, and hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, are common. With amenorrhea, there is a long term complication of osteopenia and ultimately osteoporosis. Gastrointestinal distress and constipation are common and may require symptomatic relief. Factors that indicate the need for hospitalization in patients with eating disorders. There is a rapid or persistent decline in oral intake. There is a decline in weight despite outpatient treatment. The presence of additional stressors that interfere with the patient's ability to eat, for example, concurrent illnesses, is there. There is a prior knowledge of a weight where instability is likely to occur. There is a concurrent alcohol or drug abuse. Existing comorbid psychiatric problems that merit 
including suicidality, hospitalization. Conclusion Hospitalization allows for adequate weight gain, medical stability, and establishment of safe and healthy eating habits, which improves the prognosis. These patients are usually more malnutritioned than outpatients. Nutrition may need to be provided via nasogastric tube or intravenously, and more severe complications may need to be treated.